Hi there, uh, this is Kurt. I'm going to be trying to do my first uh, tutorial video here. Uh, this is sped up at 200%, I believe. Um, I was really trying to see just how fast I could get a page done. Um, I'm sending out my portfolio to um, a lot of the bigger companies this week and uh, was just trying to find ways to get faster. And so I um, did this in about an hour. Um, right now, I'm just going through the uh, background and uh, with a soft brush, it's uh, set to uh, screen mode. I got these flats from a uh, digital art uh, group, DeviantArt group. So that was already done, and I use a flatter for all of my work. Here, I'm using a real big brush with a multiply layer to uh, darken that part of the background. I was still figuring out what I wanted to do with it at this point. That looked pretty good. And that gradient there to brighten that corner was done in a color dodge. Gets a really good glow effect. And what I'm doing to make selections here is uh, I'm using the magic wand tool and then hitting F4, which I've got set to a script, which um, duplicates the layer and locks the transparency of that layer. Um, it says that layer is current, so I can make a selection and hitting that script. I can paint all over it go crazy. I'm not going to be able to uh, paint outside of that unless I choose to turn the transparency off or turn the lock transparency off. And this is all done using the um, lasso tool and the gradient tool. Using the lasso tool to make the selection and then uh, swiping down with the gradient uh, to add the light source. And I think this is a, the, uh, the uh, gradient is set to about 25 percent here. And if I need to go lighter I can always go over it more than once. And I'm sorry if I'm assuming um, you uh, you know some of these terms. I hope you do. I guess this isn't really necessarily a true beginner's tutorial, but uh, if you have any questions, you can always leave comments. There's also a link to my Facebook um, in the description, so you can always contact me through there and uh, like my page and all that good stuff. And to add the glow effect to these windows, I just created a, uh, a layer, uh, a screen layer on top of the line art. And I believe I just used a real soft brush with uh, color dodge mode to uh, get that glow effect there. And I think I go back and change the color of that later because it's a little too green right now. <coughs> Excuse me. So there I selected all the red on uh, Spider-Man with the magic wand, hit F4, so now it's a separate layer, it's layer 2 it looks like over in the corner. So now I can make selections outside of those lines and not have to worry about it being, not have to worry about it going outside of the red. Here I'm just selecting all the areas that I want to be in shadow, and I'm holding down the shift key here to uh, add the selection to each other so it's not doesn't have to be one big selection. I'm going to set the color to a, um, a bluish here if I'm not mistaken. Yeah you can see in the corner there it's a pretty light blue in the multiply mode. 
and just brush that in with a soft brush. Because a real common mistake that I see in new colorists is they will uh, choose just a darker version of the, of the main base colors. If, if they run a color of red shadow, then they just choose a dark red. It's not necessarily always the best choice. It makes the makes everything look really flat because in reality, shadows always have uh, uh, some tone to them other than uh, what the base color would be. Same thing on the highlights here that I'm choosing now. I'm going to use an orange color. It's a swatch that I've got saved off the, off the screen here that you can't see. But I can always go grab that color, put a gradient in color dodge mode here to make that, um, that highlight. And that way I can use that same color throughout the image on the other characters and it keeps everything looking uniform. Now I'm just going back making uh, stronger highlights in a couple of places. And you'll notice I'm still using the same same color. I'm just going over it multiple times to get the uh, brighter effect. And in hindsight, I should I should have done something with his feet there too, but I kind of forgot about them. This was really just for practice, so I wasn't trying to be perfect. The selections aren't really that clean either, but it works for these purposes. Now here I, I selected that dark shadow, just the dark shadow, and uh, used that same blue color uh, and filled it in um, on gradient from the opposite direction the light source is coming from to give it a bounce light. And uh, that was just in uh, normal mode. When I talk about modes, I'm talking about the um, brush modes or the gradient modes. It's on the, the top left, usually in the newer version of Photoshop. I'm using Shift and Alt here with the Lasso tool to add and subtract uh, selections. And I played with a, duffel, a couple of different uh, colors here for the for the light uh, for the highlight on the blue. Um, the orange that I used on the, on the red just was not working, so I think I went with a pretty light blue. And I'm just going over the the blue again for another uh, another pass of highlights using the same same blue color and uh, this is in uh, I believe this is in screen mode instead of color dodge sometimes when you use color dodge too heavily uh, it tends to just blow out the image uh, makes it uh, too light um, it just doesn't look right But for, for all highlights, though, uh, it's either color dodge or um, or screen for me. Here I'm selecting the darkest parts, going over it with a uh, uh, multiply layer, darken them a little bit, or a multiply mode. I'm sorry, it's still on normal layer. And this is just another another round of highlights. And all of this section here on, on, on her is using um, gradient and color dodge. For the brightest highlights, I will usually switch to a screen 
tends to make it a little bit brighter without turning it white. And then I just grabbed the, uh, the darkest red there and ran over it with that blue multiply brush. It's at 17% right now, it looks like. 70% opacity. There, I was just darkening up his uh, eyes a little bit in the front. And sometimes you'll see me darken things where they should be light, and that's just uh, me in the wrong mood. <laughs> This is still color dodge with that same um, same orange color there on the you can see it on the right. And I've got all these tools um, set shortcuts on the keyboard, so uh, I don't have to go to menus to choose tools very often. I still do sometimes, just out of old habits that haven't broken yet. And I debated making this the Green Hulk just because there's so much other red, but it's not the Green Hulk, so it's the Red Hulk. So. I'm pretty sure all of the comments would have been that's supposed to be the Red Hulk. So. And here I'm just going over same thing I've done with the others, using the uh, lasso tool, highlighting all the areas that I want the highlight to be first. And this is pretty rough. If you get if you get close to this, uh, you know it's not exactly top notch highlighting, but I was really just doing this for practice anyway. And it takes a lot of practice to get used to, you know, where the light's going to hit an object. I've got the light source to the top left, and um, it just takes some time to figure that out. That was with that same um, orange color, in color dodge mode. It really made that red pop. Yeah, these selections are pretty awful, but it works. Now I highlighted the darkest red. Well, I fixed that part of his knee, but I highlight the, the darkest part in shadow there. Use that same blue color that I used before in normal mode, is about 20% gives it a good uh, reflection light there, bounce light coming up from the bottom. Since the light source coming from the top is warm, usually your shadows are going to be uh, cool. 
when I say warm, I mean um, warm colors, you, you know, red, orange, yellows, the cool colors being your purples and blues and sometimes green. So here I'm adding another uh, layer of bounce light, a little bit uh, brighter here. I realized after I was done, I didn't color his pants at all, but oh well. Here I'm just selecting all the background and uh, adding that same blue bounce light on a gradient there so that it kind of matches. And I added it to the bricks that are in the air there. And I normally color on a duplicate uh, layer of my flat so that I can always go back and get those selections from the flat layer but uh, I just forgot to do that on this image and um, so you'll see me having to make multiple selections like on Hulk's hair or on the building uh, where I would normally just um, go to my flats layer and it would grab it all at one time but this page was already set up when I downloaded it so I just went with it. So it's, it's a very formulaic way to work. Um, it's, um, it's really just a matter of moving from one section of color to the next. Um, it can be tedious at first if you're not used to it. Um, I am using a, um, a Wacom tablet. Uh, it's Intuos 2. It's about 10 years old, and it will not die. I, uh, I actually tried to use a uh, pen display. Um, you know, it's not a tablet. You're actually drawing and seeing uh, what you're drawing on a uh, on a display, you know, monitor tablet. And uh, I didn't like it. I think I may be the only person that ever <laughs> tried that and didn't like it. But it was too much movement for me. Um, the tablet that I use is a six by eight, and um, I can get around the whole screen very quickly. Um, and uh, just the screen was too large. The movements were too big in my arms and um, my, I say my arm, my, my wrist and my forearm. Um, we just, I felt it was too much space to try to cover and um, I think it actually slowed me down. I, I used it for a day or two. And at the time I, I had a, several jobs uh, that I was working on so I really couldn't take the time to put into, um, you know, getting better at it, really spending time with it. So. This part here uh, I did once and then realized that I did it in um, screen mode, which is why it wasn't looking the way I wanted it to. So I think I deleted it and um, yeah, and then switched to a uh, color dodge. And it brightened up a lot quicker. And I went a little heavier on the highlights here since that's uh, metal of some kind. You have to be very careful in with using color dodge because uh, it's a really low opacity that I'm using you know, around 15, 20 percent. Because if you if you get um, if you get uh, too uh, thick with that, it gets really bright really quick, and everything looks like it's on fire. And here I'm just using uh, color saturate uh, saturation to. Uh, change the color of that shadow there. I just didn't like what the multiply light was doing. And I'm still learning at this myself. I've been doing it for a long time, but there's always um, other methods and ways of doing things. So there's stuff here that you may see, and, oh, why do you do that instead of this? And I uh, haven't figured it all out yet. And you may have noticed, but I tend to start with pretty dark uh, base layers, uh, base colors, and then just build it up with light as opposed to adding uh, shadows first. 
I think the only one that I did that to was Spider-Man on here, where I added shadows first. And Color Dodge really wasn't doing enough for me on Wolverine's yellow there, so I ended up, I think, switching to uh, screen mode um, for this last row of uh, highlights here. Adding that same blue in a normal mode to darken those shadows up. The thing I like about coloring in this method is I generally don't have to choose, you know, I don't have to choose 50 colors when I'm uh, adding highlights and shadows. I've, I've kept that same, um, that same orange color for almost all of the, um, all the highlights here. I could have gone back and added some uh, color holds, colored some of the lines on um, like his claws and the glass and some of those things, but I, you know, I really wasn't the goal. I wasn't really shooting for a super finished product here. Um, The first couple of passes on this clause were in uh, color dodge mode, and these are in screen mode to brighten them up a little bit. Still with that same orange color. And this is not something that I've seen discussed in many tutorial videos on YouTube. I, I feel like I've seen them all. I, don't, I, don't, I think I have anyway. And uh, I don't know if that's a secret that I'm letting out here, but I also realized after the fact uh, the resolution on this image is pretty terrible. Um, I think it's at 72 DPI or something like that. So don't do that at home, kids. Check your resolution first. Here I changed the color of the uh, the windows. That green ones just didn't work. The yellow kind of matched some of the other yellow in the image. Just using the hue saturation to make that change. Okay, what am I doing now? Oh, here I'm adding a bit of a. I think I'm adding shadow to the wall behind them. Yeah soft brush, big soft brush multiply mode. And here I'm changing the color of the glass in the air. I think I went over it a few times with that highlight color. Really loose. Um, something else I would have spent more time on if, uh, if I was getting paid for this image.
anytime you see me pan out like this, I'm really just looking at the whole image trying to see what needs to be done next. And right now, what am I doing right now? Oh, I, I set up a screen layer on top of the lines, added a bit of a gradient on top over the lines to give it a uh, nice little glow at the top. And then I realized I didn't color his uh, webbing. And I did this really rough and ugly, but I didn't feel like going around every little individual web at this point. because I could have added some shadows around those loops that are going around it but I think I was hungry at this point Just brighten up that corner a bit more. And here, what I wanted to do was add a bit of a dust or atmospheric perspective, aerial perspective, whatever you want to call it, um, to separate. Uh, the characters from the background a bit and I was trying I was trying to select all the foreground using control in the layers but I couldn't remember what the keystroke was for it so I sort of goof around here a bit what I ended up doing I think is just merging all of the characters together um, which is normally how I color anyway the the flats that I was using was already uh, they were separated, so I just left them that way. <laughs> it took me a, a little bit to figure that out. Because I think if you control click a layer, it will um, select everything on that layer. And I was trying to do it on multiple layers. So what I did was just uh, resave it with the editor of save. Um, double check and made sure they were all all the foreground was selected and then went behind uh, in between the foreground and the background with that uh, big brush a uh, bit of a added some dust in there and then I went back to the uh, the building in the far background and um, added another layer there to give it a bit of atmospheric perspective because the further back you go the less detail you see and the lighter things get and I think that's about it I um, I messed around with the uh, some adjustments and contrast uh, saturation after the fact but um, I was pretty happy with how it turned out given the um, sort of condensed time frame I was working in so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to make some more soon. I will see you later.